Thank you. Thank you. So first and foremost, uh, we would like to thank uh, the organizers, of course, uh, for giving us uh, the opportunity to share this talk with uh, the, the community. It's a pleasure. And uh, this talk is a very compressed version of a three hour long step-by-step uh, -step hands-on workshop. We used to perform in several conferences in France. Uh, and you'll get a GitHub link, uh, GitHub repo link at the end of this talk. Uh, yes, thank you, Laurent. So here we are, Laurent Grangeau from Google uh, and myself, uh, Ludovic Pio. Uh, I'm a, a contractor and here are our tweet handle. Uh, you, can, you can go further, yeah, thank you. So when it comes to uh, deploying uh, onto Kubernetes, uh, up, up teams uh, might use uh, the kubectl uh, CLI or Elm deployment tool. Uh, and even if these tools are uh, very simple to use, they come with several issues uh, when uh, you want to use them to deploy at scale. Uh, first, uh, you don't have a, a, cons a consolidated uh, trustability. Um, uh, just just the, the slide before, please. Laurent, Laurent, yeah, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, you don't you don't have uh, any uh, any traceability uh, throughout thousands of deployed resources and uh, and several clusters. Uh, you don't keep an history of uh, the deployments you've done. Uh, of course, you've got the variables log, but uh, it's not it's not so easy to to drill down uh, into them. And finally, you have uh, security issues. Uh, you have to pass credentials to your tool, uh, uh, either Kubectl or uh, Elm, the Elm uh, tool, the Elm CLI tool, uh, in order to connect this tool to the cluster. So you have to store this, this secret uh, onto your laptop or into uh, your CI/CD uh, uh, pipeline tool. And you have to, by the way, you have to establish a, a network connection between the computer holding uh, your CLI tool and the API server. So in a, in a nutshell, you can do better. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, here come GitOps. Um, <laughs> and uh, by, by um, when um, you may know how GitOps uh, put, the, put the way to deploy uh, upside down. Uh, you keep a single source of truth, uh, which can be a Git repo and since it comes with Git, uh, you may leverage on every collaboration patterns that come with Git. So pull request, branches, uh, tagging, and so on. And then the tool uh, inside Kubernetes is going to watch this source of truth and detect any change. And uh, the, the, the magic of the deployment will come with it. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> Uh, what we do love with Flux is that it relies on the keep it stupid simple Unix pattern. So it, it mainly relies on what is the main power of Kubernetes, that is its reconciliation loop. It feeds Kubernetes with um, a desired state, uh, with a resource desired state, and then it lets Kubernetes do what it masters the most, uh, make the resources converge to their desired state. Uh, it also relies on customize and uh, and Elm, um, uh, uh, the the feature, the customized features it relies on, um, is is um, is used to consolidate the full tree, uh, the full tree of desired resources uh, get uh, uh, get from several files from the Git re uh, repository, from the source Git repository. And uh, since uh, Flux is, um, is mostly oper uh, Kubernetes operators uh, watching external sources and so on, uh, it works from inside the cluster and then it is quite heavily secured by default as, uh, as any uh, Kubernetes resources. Um, uh, can we switch to the next slide um, for the Flux architecture, please? Yeah, thank you. And so uh, Flux, uh, uh, the first, uh, the first part of Flux architecture is its CLI that install Flux resources and that uh, bootstrap the, Git, the, the Flux configuration Git repo. So yes, Flux is configured through Flux. Uh, and yes, that, that's duck fooding. Uh, <laughs> and then we have uh, several operator, operators 
you've got the first one, the source controller uh, that watch uh, Git, Git sources from GitHub, uh, GitLab, and so on, and even a uh, generic Git repo. And uh, we have uh, the Elm controller that, that will watch uh, any uh, Elm, uh, Elm repo. And uh, the last one is uh, the one that leverage on customize uh, to consolidate all the files detected in, uh, by the source controller or by the Elm controller and the, the Elm charts manifest uh, in order to consolidate uh, these uh, resources in a single uh, Kubernetes resource tree. Okay, so so no. yes, thank you, thank you, Ludo. So Ludo already told you that it's a condens condensated version of what we are used to do at, at the three-hour workshop. And for this workshop, we have three different personas. The first persona is the developer. So the developer uh, deploy and iterates on their applications autonomously and in isolation. So they want to deploy only uh, applications with either uh, customized or Helm. And they don't want to, to create or, or manipulate some, some Kubernetes uh, uh, YAML files. So it's really about applications. The second persona is operations and operation standardize how teams are onboarded inside the cluster. And what we, are, what we have found in the company, in different companies that we have worked with is generally they are, they are not multiple clusters, they're not multiple small clusters, but they, they have big clusters uh, with multi-tenancy available. Uh, and, and basically there's lots of different applications and different developers on this cluster and one for production side and one for non-production side with lots of environment like staging, uh, deployment, develop, development, sorry, uh, integration, stuff like that. So operation wants to standardize how teams are being onboarded uh, in the cluster. And of course the third person has is security and they want to uh, secure as, as uh, hard as possible the different tenants, so the different environment and uh, they want to integrate and propagate policies and authorization uh, from a central place uh, broadly uh, to, to all the team. So we have three different personas. How do they collaborate? So developers have their own uh, app, re app code repo and they're just doing some continuous integration, building images uh, with the application inside the images. And then the operation teams have their own repo with shared config and best practices, of course. And they are all deploying uh, application config or uh, deploying application with Helm or Customize. And of course, it's being made uh, through the, the, the Git disk case repo. And the security, of course, have their own uh, repo uh, for having like uh, policies, uh, for example, key value policies, or um, the other one is uh, uh, OPA, Open Policy Agent. So it, there are three different repos, and of course, all of that repo are Git-based, and uh, it's all uh, the single source of truth. So how to bootstrap Flex? So for each uh, slide, we have the, the persona at the top of the, of the slide. So the first one is the operator. So the operator will create a, a new cluster uh, to be able to have like multiple applications and multiple uh, development developer teams, developers team, sorry. So the first things to do is to bootstrap Flux. Uh, so we have a, a command line like Flux bootstrap with GitHub. And in this workshop, we are creating from GitHub uh, and Flux will create the, the different YAML file. So GOTK components, GOTK sync and customization and of course tenants from, uh, from the repository and apply them to the, to the cluster. And then, uh, so, so here is the, the content of the file. So in the GOTK sync, we have like the, the source of truth from uh, Flux system. In the GOTK sync, we have the customization files that Flux is based on to be able to uh, install and and, uh, and upgrade uh, automatically Flux because it's only based on the YAML file. And of course, we have the customization file uh, that reference the GOTK components and GOTK sync. Um, so I've already told you that, but in the cluster, 
we have different tenants, one for production, one for staging, and different namespaces. And of course, in these namespaces, we only want um, dev one team or dev two teams to be able to deploy the application, but not um, touching the other uh, namespaces. So for example, dev one team can only deploy on their own namespace and dev two team can only deploy on, on the dev two teams, but not on the dev one team. So we have to create uh, the airbag model and to be able to form the different developer teams to be able to, to deploy that application inside their own namespace. So we are creating the tenants here with flex create customization tenants. And we create a tenants.yml file that will uh, have a, a Git repository. And we tell the Flux here to, uh, to watch the path slash tenants slash staging inside the, the, the repo to have some modification. For example, if I want to create a new tenant in the staging uh, space or a new tenant in the production space. And of course, that is, that is done by the, the ops team. Uh, and then we create the, the tenant dev one team. So we create uh, with Flex create tenant dev one, and we tell Flex that uh, it will uh, it will live inside the dev one dash ns uh, namespace. So we have to have like a, a airbag YAML file. So Flex create tenant will create this airbag YAML file with the namespace dev one dash ns uh, a service account dev one dash ns also, and we apply um, a role binding with dev one flux, uh, dev one dash full dash access to be able for this um, service account to only deploy on that namespace. So with that, we have created the tenant dev one. And of course, uh, each time we create a new file or modify a new file, we have some git uh, command line, like git add yaml file, git, uh, pu uh, git commit and git push to be able for Flux to apply this YAML file inside the cluster. So once we have created the dev1 um, tenant, we have to create the dev1-full-access that is not being created part of, uh, of the Flux CLI. So we create that cluster dash roll dash dev onecyaml file that creates the dev1-full-access uh, control, cluster, cluster roll, sorry. And you see that uh, we allow the use of every verbs from, uh, from, from Kubernetes to be able to apply that inside your own namespace. So because we have like this namespace linked with the service account linked with this cluster role, so we will see that the dev1 team can only deploy your, their application uh, inside of, uh, of the namespace. And of course, for the dev1 team, we are creating the application with customize. Sorry. Uh, so we have to create a new source control based on the on the, the dev repository where lies the, the application. So for this, we are creating the flex red source. And we indicate that the URL of the GitHub repo is github.com slash one Kubernetes slash dev one aspicot application. So it's a, a little application based on Pokemon. So we are deploying the first uh, application based on aspicot. And we are creating a sync YAML file inside the path slash tenants slash base slash dev one slash sync. And this uh, path is, is based on what customized uh, are using that say the base of the of the of the of the dev one team and of course we will we, we will in the future can could deploy a, 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 pa a patch so patch one patch two patch whatever to supersede the the the, um, the parameters here uh, on the sync.yml file because uh, you know that we are uh, in the ops team and developer doesn't care about having like uh, resiliency, scalability, uh, security, of course. So they only create their applications and the ops team will just supersede the parameters like number of re replicas, uh, having some rec re requests and limits um, defined on the on the patch level. And, and so, so here we create the source and we create a new Git repository that will apply and deploy new application. 
here we create the customization. So on, um, already on, on, on the scene.yml file, so we create the customization and we only um, show that the, the path is uh, slash, so, so it's a root path and uh, it's a reference the Git repo that we created before. And we see in that in that sim.yml file, in that customization file, we are deploying the, this application in the namespace dev1-ns with the service account name uh, dev1 to be able to, to deploy that application because if we lack uh, the namespace or the service account name, it will not, uh, it, it can't be deployed because of the airbag model we have been made before. Of course, with customize, you can apply patch. So if you want to apply patch, so you see that the first one is uh, the dev1 dash patch in, in the staging environment. And the second one just refer, uh, so the second one, so the second YAML file, just refer uh, the base name and the patch that has been uh, applied. So here we are doing nothing uh, new because we are specifying only the path and just Flux can deploy that, can deploy the application in the cluster. Ludovic, you can yes, explain thanks. us. So in a, to, to sum up uh, all these, uh, all these uh, files and uh, how they interact uh, with each other, uh, we've got uh, the red, the red, the, the red uh, box, boxed files that are the Flux configuration. Uh, and uh, each time we, we have an entry point that is uh, the customization file. Uh, and this flex configuration uh, will lead to the tenant YAML, uh, which uh, configure uh, multi tenants uh, on our cluster. And this tenant is pointing onto uh, the staging tenant, the staging slash dev one tenant, which is uh, the, the, the environment which is dedicated to the dev1 team onto the staging uh, cluster, which is just a slice of a, a single cluster, uh, which is uh, here uh, at uh, cluster one. Uh, this uh, customization file uh, will call uh, the dev1 patch that overrides uh, the uh, base configuration, the base file configuration, uh, the, uh, which are upper on the, on the upper side, okay? And this, uh, these files <coughs> will, uh, will uh, target uh, a, third, uh, a third source, a third configuration source, that is the, the, the green source, which is uh, the, the configuration that is dedicated to dev1. And here it's in a separate uh, Git repo. And this, uh, this, uh, custom, this, the entry point is, uh, of course, a customization file. And this, uh, this entry point, is this entry point, sorry, um, is uh, just uh, deploying uh, a deployment resource and a service resource uh, we, that will deploy uh, our, uh, our ASPICOT uh, application. So the, the tricky part uh, of, configuration, uh, of configuration with Flux is this uh, waterfall of, uh, of, um, of uh, inheritance of, uh, of legacy. But uh, uh, um, other um, beside this uh, this uh, tricky tricky part is it's really simple, as you as you can see. Uh, of course, by uh, by doing by uh, using these several sources, you can have one source for multiple clusters or elaborate a very uh, very. Uh, complicated strategy, for example, uh, a branch uh, for, uh, for a specific cluster, and you can have a specific strategy like canary strate strategy, uh, thanks to customized patches. So you, you can have, just like we, we've, we've done uh, before, uh, a base uh, configuration, and over on top of this uh, base configuration, you will have uh, patches that, uh, that derivates this, this base configuration, that, that derivate this base configuration into uh, a configuration for a staging cluster, for production cluster, and so on. And of course, you can install uh, any, um, uh, um, any uh, operation uh, component like Istio, Prometheus, and so on. 
for example, uh, uh, a Prometheus installation, uh, Laura? Yes, uh, I will speed up because we have two minutes left. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, for example, uh, install Prometheus, you can do that. Uh, here, I create a new source based on Helm, the Prometheus community. And uh, I also define some values the YAML file, like uh, Alert Manager, Enable, Eagle Force, Grafana, uh, Dashboards, stuff like that. And it uh, apply the new, um, the, the new configuration inside the cluster. And of course, uh, you create a new Helm re release, so it will be sourced uh, inside the Prometheus community repository, but we can install a new chart version. For example, here I installed the 31.0.0 with my values uh, .yml file to be able to, uh, to install a new configuration of Prometheus. And this is really uh, useful when you manage hundreds of clusters and you want to install like the same version of Istio, Prometheus, uh, Grafana, whatever, uh, on every uh, every cluster in the same company, uh, because uh, this all of the this cluster will point to the same uh, hand release and hand repo. I can just with one uh, one git push away uh, install a new version of Istio, for example, inside all of the cluster without having a separate version on separate clusters. And to finish this talk, uh, and of course, we can install, for example, Kiverno, uh, which is a, a, a policy uh, enforcement uh, application. Here, I create a new customization based on, on Kiverno. I can create uh, a new service account policy. Here, I enforce the creation of the service accounts. And uh, if some, someone wants to deploy a new application without a service account name, uh, Kivano will say that the service account is required before deploying that on the cluster. And of course, uh, as the same uh, as, as uh, before, I create customizations in the tenants with Kivano policies inside the tenants. And I say the Kivano policies depends on Kivano, so Flex can just deploy Kivano before applying some policies. And it's really, really useful. Uh, and of course, uh, when we talk about security, security teams can create the YAML file and just open a new, open a new PR on the, on the ops team. So it really brings uh, also collaboration between two or three different teams, the developer, the operations, and the security teams. And that's bring uh, with GitOps, you can bring like um, a DevSecOps pipeline uh, live. Thank you very much uh, for uh, Flex and we've worked with to have us on, on this uh, talk. If you want to have like, like the re repository, the, re the main repository, you can go to github.com slash one dash Kubernetes slash workshop. We have a step-by-step -step, uh, with a Flex maintenance that reproduce what we have shown you. And you have the, the, the uh, a more complete version of, of the slides. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Uh, and as usual, uh, the YouTube stream is wrapping up and I've let people know, um, please post your questions to the Slack channel because we will continue to monitor those, those questions over the coming week. Um, and I uh, will alert you in case there's any that you don't catch. But I'll just share that one person was saying, uh, this is a user testimonial turning into a crash course. So they found it very, very useful. So thank you so much for thank joining you. us. I know it's late for you, so appreciate it very much. Uh, and we thank will you. see thank you. Thank you so much. We will see you in the Slack.